Hey Calvary, thanks for watching. Hope you guys are excited and ready for Thanksgiving here in a few days. As we launch into your word for the day today, I have a question for you. How are you at following rules? Because frankly, I'm pretty bad at it. All my life I've struggled to follow rules that seemed pointless or without purpose. And that's partly why I'm thankful to be in this place of God's work in history and work in the world. See, in the Old Testament, the people of God thrived by following the rules of God. They had a set of rules and guidelines and laws that led and governed them and gave them direction on following God. See, this started well, but it got a little harder as it went on. Now, don't get me wrong, rules and guidelines are incredibly important. When I take our high school students to camp or a mission trip, the first night we're there, I sit everyone down and communicate the rules and expectations that I have for them for that week. But the hard thing for many of them is remembering the rules. So I try to keep them short, succinct, and a little silly at the same time. But it was no different in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is known for its rules, its laws, its guidelines, its restrictions, and it's best known for the Ten Commandments. Many of you know these or at least could catch several of them. But there's a lot more in the Old Testament than just the Ten Commandments. In fact, there's 613 total commandments and instructions in the Old Testament. To go along with that, some of the religious leaders and Pharisees in that time thought that some of those rules need a little bit more clarity and a little bit more added on. For instance, the, the command to take a Sabbath and take a rest from work one day a week. They didn't think that was rigid and restrictive enough, so they created 39 categories of work that couldn't be done on the Sabbath. If you were back in that day, you'd have to mount a Rolodex on your camel to keep track of all the things you could and couldn't do. So when Jesus came along, a question that came up frequently was, what's the most important commandment? Out of 613 laws, where should we start? If you were living in that point in history, you'd be wondering the same thing. So today in Mark chapter 12, we're going to see Jesus answer that question. In verse 28, it says, And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputed with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, they asked him, Which of the commandments is most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and that there is no one besides him. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the strength and all the love to one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared ask him any more questions. What's Jesus doing here? Well, he's giving us the priorities, not just of the rules and laws and instructions of how to understand the Bible. He's giving each and every one of us a priority list for our life. He says first, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Second, he says, to love your neighbor or the people around us as much as we love ourselves. So today, as you launch into your day, how are you doing with that? How well are you at loving God and following him? Does he have all of your heart? Does he have the, the attention and focus of your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength? What about that second commandment? How well are you at loving other people? How well are you at loving that annoying coworker, that drama-filled family member, that friend that voted different than you and keeps posting about it even now? See, we can follow all the rules. We can even offer God a lot of religious duties and sacrifices, like this man mentioned the temple sacrifices, but if we aren't loving God and loving people, we miss the point. So today, let me encourage you to follow and love God like your life depends on it, because it does. And to love other people in such a way that it feels radical and uncomfortable, because that's exactly what Jesus is calling each of us to do. Hope this has been a help and encouragement to you today. We'll see you next time, Calvary.